dare to dream, dare to dream of your ideal even and go for it. I just saw somebody just sent me a, a quote of Oprah saying the exact same thing, basically. Basically, she said, dare to dream of your most expansive dream. Dare to dream and go for it in any way you can. Sure, maybe a lot of people say, oh, I work full time. I got a mortgage and a family. I just don't have time to do what I want. And I said, you have some time. You have some time during the week. It doesn't take 40 hours a week to fulfill these dreams. Yeah, even a couple hours a week will make a big, huge difference. If you did it every Saturday afternoon, you know, dare to dream and go for it. Doubts and fears will arise, deal with them. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce you to Mark Allen. Mark Allen is a world famous author, publisher, musician, and magician when it comes to winning the inner game of life and hopefully teaching us. How to create success with ease by becoming our own inner magicians. Publisher of 550 world changing books at his company New World Library, including The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and Creative Visualization by Shakti Gawain, as well as authors like Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, and Mother Teresa. Musician of seven albums and author of 18 books including The Millionaire Course, Visionary Business, Tantra for the West, and my all-time favorite, because it has actionable steps and meditations, the audio version of his book, The Magical Path, Creating the Life of Your Dreams and a World that Works for All. Welcome, Mark. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for that sweet introduction. It seems like, it makes me seem like I do so much, but I'm really quite lazy. That's what I love about your approach, the success with ease. So start by sharing with our audience how you, as one of us, author, you know, creator, changed the direction of your life from your 20s by still Mm -hmm. being lazy, as you say, and laid back. Tell us your (laughs) origin story, which sounds like a fairy tale. And give us an right. overview of your work. Looking back, it it is quite a story. It was the day I turned 30, changed my life. Up until then, I'd been a total poverty case. I was living in a little slum apartment, not a nice place, a one-room apartment in a not a nice part of Oakland, California. It had bars on the windows on a busy street. I had no money, no job, no family support. We scrounged every month, the word we used all the time to come up with the rent. Oh, I got to scrounge this rent together. What do I do this month? That I look in looking back, that was my visualization every month. And I remember thinking, you know, I just come up with the rent every month. It's almost like magic. I remember thinking that I was at that point being a very creative magician, but I was creating just barely enough to pay for rent in a little funky, funky place, you know. But the day I turned 30, I woke up in a state of shock. I realized I wasn't a kid anymore. Somehow being 29, I I still felt like a teenager and it was cool to be a musician and spiritual seeker who was uh, broke, you know. Somehow that that was okay with me. The day I turned 30, literally this voice said, You're not a kid anymore. You're 30. My friends wanted to have a party. I said, no way. I have to spend the day alone. And I did spend most of the day alone just pacing up and down in my little place, thinking about things. That day changed my life. When I look back on it, I was a different person at the end of that day than I was at the beginning. Because as I paced up and down, I remembered a little game I'd played years ago in one ridiculous back to the land experiment I tried once that didn't work at all when I was about 22. One night we were sitting around a fire and this couple said, let's play this game we play at church camp. Let's imagine five years had passed and everything has gone as well as you could imagine. What would your life look like? And we all went around the fire. I've thought about it many times. I don't remember a word of what I said, but the day I turned 30, I thought, this is a good game to play. This time I took a sheet of paper and wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. I wrote ideal scene at the top and I imagined being 35. To me, that sounded so impossibly old. I thought, God, in only five years, 
I'll be middle aged. What is my ideal life? What life do I want to be living at 35? And much to my amazement, what spelled out was, I have a successful publishing company. It amazed me as I wrote it because I'd had no interest in business. I'd been a musician, an actor, a spiritual seeker. I had nothing to do with money or never studied anything. In fact, I thought money was the root of all evil. I knew I needed it every month, but I was very conflicted about money. So it surprised me. I, I have a successful publishing company that cruises along. Another one was, and I write books. I write books that reach a large number of people and have a great impact in the world. And I record my music. And I have a big white house on a hill in Marin County, California. This to me was my dream. It's across the bay from Oakland, north of San Francisco over the Golden Gate Bridge. There's this beautiful county that's 75% undeveloped, wide open, and just gorgeous, expensive. I said, that's where I want my house. Of course, doubts and fears all the time were run, just rushing in, just, but I kept up. I kept up doing it. As I thought it through, then I added one thing that maybe is fairly unique. I said, oh, and if I'm thinking of my ideal, I have a life of ease. I only work when I feel like it. I, I've been a musician and I love musicians hours. You never did a thing till one in the afternoon. It never. So that was my dream. Okay, I'll start a business, but I, I won't do anything till one in the afternoon. I'll sleep late as I love to do. I'll do everything. And I, and I wrote it down. And in fact, I put in big letters at the top. I'll do everything in an easy and relaxed manner, a healthy and positive way in its own perfect time for the highest good of all wrote my ideal. I stared at that, paced up and down. Doubts and fears were just rushing in saying impossible, but I put them aside long enough. I realized there's a list of goals in there. And I made a list of goals, 12 goals, start a publishing company, start writing your books, start recording music. It was, everything was start because nothing was happening in my life. <laughs> and then I stared at those. And I remembered a book I had read by this wonderful Unity Church minister named Catherine Ponder in my 20s. And she wrote all about affirmations. She taught me about affirmations. She gave me that phrase in an easy and relaxed manner, in a healthy and positive way, in its own perfect time for the highest good of all. A phrase, a phrase I continue to say every day of my life many times. So I rewrote every goal as an affirmation. I'm now in an easy and relaxed manner, creating a wonderful publishing company. I'm now writing wonderful books that have a great impact in the world. I'm now recording my music. I'm now getting into real estate and getting uh, this house on the hill. And I wrote them as affirmations, took the folder and I put it on the folder. I'm now creating the life of my dreams. And in there, I put my ideal scene, my list of goals, my goals as affirmations. And then oh, starting even that day, but then over the next few days, plans started to emerge for each thing. And I wrote plans on one page, one page plans for every goal every major goal that I could plan. And I, I had the feeling right from the beginning that the important thing was just to get my subconscious mind saying yes to all this and to get moving on it. So my plans were really lame at first. My, my first business plan literally was the entire plan was I had at the top, create a successful business in an easy and relaxed manner, a healthy and positive way, in its own perfect time for the highest good of all. Number one, read a used business one-on-one -on -one textbook because I'd never studied business at all. I'd been a theater major in college. Two, talk to people who know more about business than I do. That was my entire plan. That's all I could think of because that's all I knew. So I started these one-page plans for every goal, just kept moving forward, dealt with my doubts and fears. And to this day, I say there's just two essential things really in creating the life of your dreams. One, having the dream, clearly having the dream of that life you want, and two, dealing with all the doubts and fears that inevitably arise. So do you have a tip to tell us how to deal with um, our beliefs, our doubts, and our fears? I mean, I have methods I've learned over the years, but I'd love to hear how you would advise someone today to overcome those doubts in the way you did. There are so many ways. And when we think about it, we have been dealing with doubts and fears all our lives. And I can think of two things for me that were particularly powerful. I dialogued with my doubts and fears. 
as soon as I started writing my dreams, I said, oh, that's way too much. And then, and then when I got down to doing it in an easy and relaxed manner, they said, impossible impossible it's never been done you got to work hard to start your own business and then my father's voice came in you got to work 60 hours a week if you start your own business my that inner critical parent i said well let me try this as an experiment i'd heard about a man named bucky fuller in the 60s and he said when he was in his 20s he decided to either commit suicide or look at his life as this unique experiment Unfortunately, he chose experiment. He went around speaking in his 70s. He looked back on his 50 year experiment. So I grabbed that word experiment. And I said, OK, doubts and fears, give me a year to experiment. This is a worthwhile experiment. This is a worthwhile thing to do. What have I been doing? I've been doing nothing, going nowhere. I might as well go for this dream and try it as purely as an experiment. They say it won't work, won't work, impossible. I said, well, if it doesn't work. I won't be any worse off than I am now. I had no job, no family support, nothing going on. So even my doubts and fears kind of had to say, well, yeah, yeah. So I got around them purely as an experiment. Then the other technique that really worked for me was something I learned when I was 28. I took a weekend workshop by an incredible teacher named Ken Kais Jr., who'd written a book called Handbook to Higher Consciousness. And he did these weekend workshops in Berkeley. And the thing I really remember about it was on the Sunday afternoon, he had us break into groups of four and each of us did what he called the core belief process. We went around the circle. Each of us did it. It was just answering eight questions. And it's great for dealing with doubts and fears. Now I can even, I can whip through the questions because they were very simple. You just be honest with yourself. And all you do is say, okay, f- first question, what's the problem? The core belief works, you know, what would those doubts and fears are fearing something? There's a problem. You just say what it is. Then two, you just say, what are you feeling physically when you're confronting this problem? You tune in and describe your body, which is very helpful. It leads to awareness. And then what are you feeling emotionally? You just name the emotion. Oh, I'm, I'm frustrated. And then you say, We used to say, what tapes are running in your head? Tapes are kind of out now, but you know what repetitive thoughts are going over and over and over in your head? It's much like number one, what's the problem? But you just, you realize, you know, over 95% of our thoughts are supposed to be repetitive. You know, we rarely have an original thought. We're so often, especially when we're caught up in problems and frustrations where the same things are going around and around. And you just say those things out loud, you become aware of them. Then the fifth one is, what's the worst that could happen? And here you look at your worst fears. Well, I could go bankrupt. And you even say, if that happened, what's the worst that could happen? And that really opens those closet doors to the fears that we don't really like to look at. Get them out there. What's the worst that could happen? Okay. Then you ask, what's the best thing that could happen? What's my ideal scene here? Over the years, I've done this with probably hundreds of people in workshops now. Almost each time, it's the same thing with people when they do this the first time. You say, what's the worst that could happen? They say, wow. And they immediately go off, you know, I could go bankrupt. Then you say, what's the best that could happen? And they say, uh, you come to realize you've been looking at the worst possibilities. You've been looking at your fears. You haven't been looking at the best possibilities at all. What's the best that could happen? Oh, well, gee. So you go there. What's the best that could happen? You ask yourself. And then you say, why isn't that happening? Why isn't the best possible ideal scene happening? And whatever you come up with, really reflects your deep, what he called core beliefs. I like to now call them underlying beliefs because core beliefs sound so solid Hmm. and unchanging, but they aren't, they can change. We can change it. We do change our beliefs a lot over our lives. So what's your deep underlying belief? That'll come to the surface right there, whatever it is. And then the eighth question, what is a counter statement? or affirmation that directly contradicts that deep belief you have. What is it? You come up with an exact opposite counter statement, an affirmation, and you repeat that. 
I did it financially with money, one of the first ones I did. And what I got down to was, you know, why aren't I living my abundant ideal scene? I said, well, and it's best to do this in the simplest words possible. Words your subconscious can really get. Words of seven-year-old can understand. I said, I'm a fool with money. I'm out of control. So my counter statement, my affirmation was, I am sensible and in control of my finances. I am creating total financial success in an easy and relaxed manner, a healthy and positive way, in its own perfect time for the highest good of all. That was my mantra for about 18 months. And I went from a poverty case to a person with a pretty abundant cash flow here. I believe that. I believe you went from, as you say, a poverty case to a millionaire in a few years. And one of the things I learned was that you did allow the fact that other people, like your the accountant you hired, could help you in this quest, that you didn't have to be everything. I think a lot of us as creatives get critical of ourselves because we're not, say, good with balancing the books or whatever. Could you talk on that? Yes, I'm still really quite clueless financially. I have a wonderful CFO in my company and she will produce these reports for me and I find good people. One thing I found myself saying in a talk one time uh, about my book, Visionary Business, I said, you know, there's just three things that are essential for success in every business and every career. There are three things you got to get together. One is your product or service, and that the creative people have, that the founders of it have. Most most of the people I work with, they've got the idea. They know what they want to do. Some of them are already doing it. Then you have to have some way to monetize it, to market it, and to sell it. And then you need financial controls. I was clueless about marketing and financial controls. Still to this day, I have no interest in marketing, and I'm clueless about financial controls and things but I've got the right people in place. So I can just look for, with my publishing company, new products, new things, the thing I can do what I love. And I've got the team in place that really promotes those, sells those, and really keeps good financial controls, keeps a downward pressure on expenses and maximizes profits. And did that come meeting those people and coming, it seems in your life, you came across, um, you know, the, the the works of people. Did that come effortlessly as well because you intended that you would find the right people or did you come, did you have some mistakes along the way? And when um, you do come across a a knock in life, I believe you, you, you often say there's always a gift. Yeah, I love that quote from Bhagavad Gita. Even in the knocks of life, we find great gifts. What is the gift here? That's a great question to ask. And yeah, the the first three years were uh, pretty chaotic and we lost money. And because I just started it with all my friends and none of us were business people at all. Uh, My friend Sky was a musician, same as me. We'd we'd had a band before that. And my girlfriend at the time, Shakti Gawain, she'd been a dance major. Nobody involved had any business experience whatsoever. But what happened over time was the the people that that weren't good for the jobs ended up leaving. And we just attracted people that came in that knew what they were doing. The first woman that came along, she's still with me, Victoria Clark, on the financial end. She'd worked in a bank, and then she was uh, a bookkeeper for about four different little businesses. So she came in to do part-time bookkeeping, said, your books are a mess, and she whipped them into shape. And she, she literally showed me how to make a profit, how to cut expenses. Mark, question that's going through my mind, who who has applied affirmations and visualizations throughout my life and many other people, why don't we get the results that you did? That's a great question. And I really believe it's quite simply, I'm simple. I do believe, as someone said, our subconscious mind is like an incredibly powerful five-year-old that'll believe whatever you tell it. The whole process is... is far as I understand it, is getting that subconscious to say yes. And and the subconscious will say yes to whatever you tell it. So when you do affirm, I am now creating the life of my dreams. I am now creating a successful business. Your subconscious will say yes. 
and start showing you the next steps to take. But then if your next thoughts are, oh, it's, it's so hard to succeed. So few people succeed. It'll completely undo. Your subconscious will say, yes, it's hard for you with those thoughts. Yes. Right. You're right. So I think that's the whole process. I think I mean, I'm, I'm not special in any way. Uh, I know so many people that are so much more intelligent than I am and get things faster and everything. But I do know that I just watch my thought every moment. And I see, oh, is that thought working against me or for me? Comes down to that, getting an awareness of your thinking every moment of the day. And when you realize you're off track, getting back on track. I, I did hear the wonderful analogy years ago that a plane is off course over 95% of the time, but the pilot just keeps correcting over and over and over. When I first heard that, I thought, oh, that's the story of my life. Hmm. You know, that's, that's it in a nutshell. As soon as we dare to dream, we set it our course. The morning of my 30th birthday, I had no course. I realized for years, I was just like a ship wandering around the ocean with no destination. So of course, no destination, you don't get anywhere. But by the evening, I had a plan. I had a course. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Then I would get off course with every doubt and fear. Oh, it's so hard. I called my dad and told him I was starting a business. His first words were, well, you know, 80% of businesses fail their first two years. And I realized, oh, okay, I can't share my dreams with my dad because he will reflect my own doubts and fears. And there were a lot of other people like that I, I did not share my dreams with. I did have a few friends that were supportive of me. It's helpful to have a few supportive friends. Not essential, but it's really helpful. So that, that, that's very helpful. And now I'd like to move what I've learned from you in the magical path to some of the, would you call them spiritual or energy practices that boost probably this, you could say, affirming and visualization of, of the mind and inner subconscious. What I'm thinking of is the middle pillar meditation, which is so simple, but I've been doing it for the last year, and I think it's very powerful. Could you explain how you discovered it and how perhaps as we sit down to write a book or be to, as, a, as a daily habit or ritual, we can apply it? And now for a word from the sponsor. Today's show is sponsored by the upcoming best-selling book, The Inner Game of Writing, where I have collated the golden nugget wisdom of renowned transformational healers like Brandon Bays, writers like Dr. Joe Vitale of The Secret, and publishers like Mark Allen to help authors and creatives like you tap into your brilliance by upping your inner game in life and writing. And now, back to our interview. Question. Middle pillar meditation was one of the very first things I ever discovered on the spiritual path, uh, I was right out of college and I was in horrible health because throughout college, especially my last two years, I took way too much crystal methadrine. I was speeding through college. It was horrible for my health. And I didn't realize it. I was, we were so stupid then. We didn't realize the effect of these kind of drugs. And I was in really bad health. I couldn't walk up a flight of stairs without pausing because my heart would be going. Then I... I left college. I got a job with a theater company. We went on a tour and, and we were in Madison, Wisconsin. I had an afternoon free and I wandered into this. I just saw this little bookstore and it was all books on Western magic. And I wandered in and I knew nothing about it. I was fascinated about it. There was a guy behind a desk sort of in the corner, long black hair and a black beard looking very mysterious. And I said, What's this all about? And he said, have a chair. And he gave me about an hour course in Western magic. And I ended up with this stack of books. Most of them were big and involved and I didn't even get into them. But the smallest one on the top, there was a little book called The Art of True Healing by Israel Gardi. That book really changed my life. To this day, I do the practices from it. The little short book, I in fact, excerpt the entire book in my book, The Magical Path. In chapter four, it's all about the art of true healing. So you get two books for the price of one. It's a great book. And it did have this, basically it had this meditation he called the middle pillar. He talked about the Kabbalah and how we have a left 
side and a right side, basically a feminine and masculine, and then they meet in the middle, the middle pillar. It's just a meditation where you visualize healing energy flowing through your whole body. And you run energy, you call it, through your whole body. And I remember I just sat in an easy chair with that book and I did the meditation right out of the book. Maybe I spent half an hour, I don't know how much time at all, but it was quite an elaborate meditation. Now I do a very, very simple version of it. I just let energy go from the top of my head, just through my entire body, healing and cleansing, healing and cleansing. That's my real simplified version. He had a much more complicated version that, that I did. And I remember when I got up out of that chair, I felt healed. I felt 20 pounds lighter. My heart had slowed down. I'm sure my blood pressure had dropped. I felt healed. It was an amazing experience. I kept doing it. It's one of the few meditations I've kept doing all my life. Uh, one reason is because I almost always do it just flat on my back in my favorite yoga posture, the corpse position, you know, just flat on your back with your hands up. I do that every afternoon. I think it's why I've been in almost perfect health for the last 50 some years now. I think that's such a powerful message to people today. We live in these frenetic times and people do think they have to struggle and that success is difficult. I think what's wonderful is your message comes from someone who has made it as a success. And there's no doubt you have. And yet there's this ease attitude of it doesn't have to be difficult. But there is persistence, I'm hearing. And there's application. And yeah. what would be one piece of advice or quote to leave with us? I always say the same thing when asked that. Just dare to dream. Dare to dream of your ideal even and go for it. I just saw somebody just sent me a, a quote of Oprah saying the exact same thing, basically. Basically, she said, dare to dream of your most expansive dream. Dare to dream and go for it in any way you can. Sure, maybe a lot of people say, oh, I work full time. I got a mortgage and a family. And I just don't have time to do what I want. And I said, you have some time. You have some time during the week. It doesn't take 40 hours a week to fulfill these dreams. Even a couple hours a week will make a big, huge difference. If you did it every Saturday afternoon, you know, dare to dream and go for it. Doubts and fears will arise, deal with them. That's a beautiful yeah. way to end. Do you have a free gift or something to share with our audience that I can put in the show notes? Oh, yeah. I mean, there are a bunch of things on my website that are free on markallen.com, M-A-R-C-A-L-L-E-N. A lot of videos that are totally free now. And Or, yeah, you can just Google or do YouTube, do Mark Allen YouTube. And a lot of my talks are there. Some of my best talks are, are there. And, uh, uh, okay. So thank you. But you may have one um, link to something that, that you can, that I'll put in the show notes for okay. everyone. Thanks so much as, as, oh, as you've shared the success with ease. I mean, there's so many questions I could ask you about writing, publishing and profiting as a writer, but mm -hmm. without that inner game sorted, I think you lost. Well, you may, you may achieve certain amount, but then that's where that's where you can go off your path for a laugh and a writing laugh that works. Do you agree? Said as Eckhart Tolle says in Power of Now, get the inside right and the outside will fall into place. Thanks for joining me on today's podcast. Want a free gift to inspire you further on your book writing adventure? My free checklist, five book hook tips to kickstart your book writing journey will help you get clarity on the key essentials to make your book a winner. Download it at writethebookinsideyou.com forward slash free gift. The links are in the show notes. Until next time, a big virtual hug and keep writing.